Well, thank you. It's wonderful to be here. <laughs> uh, Patricia, what is the World Congress of Illumination and how did it start it? Well, this is a, an annual event that began with the first activity that was referred to as Harmonic Convergence. And this is a, you may be familiar with that. That took place in August, and I know you're all too young to have participated in it, <laughs> but it was in August of 1987. And we were told at that time there was a lot of information about the Mayan calendar. You know, we've all heard so much about 2012 and all the activities that are taking place. Well. The initial impulse of this shift began with Harmonic Convergence in August 15th, 16th, and 17th in 1987. And what was actually occurring at that time is that people all over the world started having this heart call and would travel to sacred sites for the energy that was going to be coming in at that time. And it was amazing because hundreds of thousands of people responded to this inner knowing and to the information that they were getting and we didn't have at that time the internet or Facebook or Twitter or any of the social networks that are available now and yet people were here for a purpose on the physical plane and they this was like their wake-up call and what this really was is that people were aligning all over the planet in alignment with the acupuncture meridians and the chakra system of the planet and the light was coming in. We, at that time, were asked by the beings of light in the realms of truth that are just our sisters and brothers that have evolved to a higher level of consci uh, consciousness to organize a global event in Diamond Head in Hawaii. And Diamond Head was the crown chakra on the continent of Lemuria where the energy first came into the planet before our fall, which took place eons ago. And the light during harmonic convergence, it poured into the planet through the crown chakra, into the center of the earth, then expanded out through the chakra system of the planet, all of what is known as the crystal grid system, which is just the acupuncture meridians in the body of the earth. And it brought in a higher frequency of light that began Earth's awakening process and we were asked by the beings of light to organize an event every year on the anniversary of harmonic convergence and we were told that this would be a 25 year process and that the first five years would be pretty tumultuous and then we would go through this major shift and that shift was called moving through the doorway of 1111 and that took place in January 1992 and then it was going to build in momentum for 25 years, a total of 25 years, until the shift that would take place on December 21st, 2012. So every year we have had, this year we will have, we will be in Kauai in August for the World Congress on Illumination. And this will be the 26th annual World Congress on Illumination. And it's just a gathering. It's a global event. People all over the world participate. Some are directed inwardly to physically be present there so people travel and go there so that they can offer to be an instrument to allow the light of God to flow through them for whatever the divine plan is. And various divine plans, various facets of the divine plan have taken place year by year. Now, it's important to understand this is just one of literally thousands of of events and activities of light that are taking place all over the planet all of the, all of the time there is a tremendous awakening taking place and no part of the plan is any more important than another part of the plan this was just one facet that I personally have been involved with but there have been all kinds of activities of light and I'm sure all of you are participating in them as well every meditation you do every time you come together in a group every invocation you make certainly your radio program that's drawing the attention and consciousness of people all over the world this is an activity of light and gives the company of heaven a portal a door through which they can accelerate the light on the planet and that's what's really causing this tremendous awakening so that people are beginning to remember who they are and why they are here. Mm -hmm. 
So it's interesting that it's interesting that you say that because there is a lot of kids that have been feeling this sense of I'm not doing enough. What can I do to make more? And what advice do you have for those kids that feel like they want to do more, but they don't know what exactly to do because they don't feel like they're doing enough for the world or um, raise their vibration? Okay, one of the things that's important to understand is that we are here, and when I say we, I'm talking about every man, woman, and child on the planet because we have been preparing for a very long time to assist the earth with this ascension process as she's moving into the higher dimensions and all life that's evolving on this planet is going forth with her. So our God self, the divinity within each of us, has guided us through exactly the learning experiences we needed to start awakening and to start fulfilling our divine plan. So when we begin to feel that awakening within us, realizing that we have a purpose and reason for being, we need to understand that there is no separation. All life is interrelated, interconnected, and interdependent. Every thought, word, action, or feeling you have is either adding to the light of the world or it's adding to the chaos, depending on what you're thinking. If you're thinking negative things, angry thoughts, hateful things, then you're adding to the discord. If you're thinking positive things, being kind and loving and caring for people, you're adding to the light. And the universal law is, as I am lifted up, all life is lifted up with me. So what is happening now is that our God selves are guiding us into exactly the experiences we need. Our religions, our uh, jobs that we feel directed to, the, the schools we go to, we are all in our right and perfect place. But we need to listen to those inner heart calls, those inner promptings. So if you feel like you're not doing enough or that there's more that you should be doing, look in your environment, look in your community, look in your school and see how you can add to the light of the world. One of the things that's happening, this is such a critical time for all life on this planet, is that our Father, Mother, God, the cosmic I am, all that is, has granted a special cosmic dispensation. You've probably all heard the statements, ask and you shall receive, knock and the door will be open. And what that means is that we have the gift of free will and our thoughts and feelings are creative. The angels, the company of heaven, the saints, the ascended masters, the cosmic beings, however you want to identify that higher level of intelligence, our sisters and brothers that are helping us. And these are just beings that have evolved. They're like college professors compared to us being kindergarten students. They do not have permission to interfere with our free will. But once we ask for their assistance, and we can just say, I ask God and the company of heaven to intervene in my life in a way that is the highest good for me and for all concerned on this planet. And it gives them permission then to intervene. Now, one thing that is unusual that our Father Mother God has granted to the company of heaven is because of the need of the hour and because of how important it is when we all come together, like on this radio show or like when you have group gatherings or meditations or whatever, it's so important. We're so much more powerful when we come together in a group. So the, our Father Mother God has given the company of heaven permission to, when we are invoking the light, like we just did in this meditation, and there's people all over the world listening to the meditation, participating in the meditation. The company of heaven has been given permission to amplify that meditation and everybody that's focusing on it a thousand times a thousand fold. So if we want to increase our effectiveness, we need to invoke the light more and we need to get together in groups and we need to do positive things and we need to be loving and we need to be caring and we need to say, what can I do today 
It's going to bring more joy into somebody's life. It's going to be more comfort. It's going to be more beneficial and more helpful. And since all life is interrelated and interconnected, everything you do, even if it may seem small at the moment, is adding to the collective light of the world and lifting up every particle of life on this planet. So know that you are powerful beyond your knowing and every single thing you do to add to the light of the world is being amplified a thousand times a thousand fold if you invoke the company of heaven to assist you while you're doing it. That is beautiful. And I have a question Mm -hmm. off of Skype actually says, this person asked, I have been having trouble staying centered right now. Any suggestions you can offer? Okay, this is really a very, very volatile time for all of us. And the reason is, is that we are raising up an energy vibration and consciousness. And our God self is accelerating the vibration of our physical, etheric, mental and emotional bodies at a cellular level, literally a cellular transformation, accelerating the vibration, the maximum we can withstand in every 24 hour period. So it feels often stressful on our physical bodies, which makes us feel anxious, sometimes even verging on panic attacks. So what we need to do is we need to invoke one of the beings that is the best to do this with is Archangel Michael. He is an angel of protection, power and protection. Ask Archangel Michael to envelop you in an invincible force field of protection that keeps you from being bombarded by all of the chaos that's taking place in the outer world. Just see this circle of white light around you filled with light, with joy, with peace. When you're talking about all of these beautiful colors that are coming forth from the heavenly realms, vibrating with peace and harmony, listen to more harmonious music because harmonious music is a way of raising our cellular vibration. Meditate. But one of the easiest ways is the breath. So breathe in deeply. Now, the beings of light are asking us to to know that that part of our divinity that's called our God Self is known as the I Am Presence. And you're probably familiar in one way or another with the statement. For instance, when Moses spoke to the burning bush, the response and said, who are you? The response was, I am that I am. I am Alpha, I am Omega, I am the beginning, I am the ending. When we say I am, that's a code word that tunes us in directly to our Father, Mother, God. I comes from Alpha, meaning the one or the beginning. Am comes from Omega, meaning the ending. And when we say I am, it means God is the beginning and ending of all that exists that God is all that is. And the divinity within us is part of that all-encompassing presence of God. So when we call it our I Am Presence, we're connecting directly to our source. So when we are trying to calm ourselves, if we will just breathe in deeply and say I as we are inhaling and feeling that breath reaching higher and higher into the realms of perfection, then exhaling and we say am and when we exhale feel that we're drawing that light from the heart of god through our bodies and breathing it out into the physical plane to bless all life and just take a few minutes and breathe in and say i exhale and say am so putting yourself in that force field of protection of archangel michael having positive thoughts, listening to beautiful music, and doing that holy breath, connecting directly with the source, is incredibly calming, centering, and grounding for you. Thank you so much. Um, We have a call, area code 813. Um, You're on. Do you have a question for Patricia? Area code... 813, are you here? Oh, okay. Not, I just lost them. Okay, then. So, we have a question on the chat room. It says, My name is Sam, 
and I think I'm having dreams about bad future events. How can I make sure that they are true and what I should do with this? Okay, the earth is in the midst of transformation. And at any given moment, this planet is reflecting a sum total of humanity's thoughts, words, actions, and feelings from all time frames and dimensions. There is no separation. We can't just say cancel, cancel, and eliminate our past. So what is happening now is that the light of God is coming into the physical plane. And it's entering all of the negativity, all of the garbage, all of the misqualified energy. And as it enters the physical plane, it pushes everything to the surface that conflicts with that light. So what is happening is that the negativity is being pushed to the surface. And we're easily seeing the negativity. So we see all of the negative things happening all over. The elemental kingdom, which are, is the divine intelligence that's associated with the earth, the air, the water, and the fire. The elemental kingdom is reflecting humanity's consciousness, and it's assisting with this cleansing and purging process. So we are going to have some outer world shifts and cleansing. But there has been a healing that has taken place between the elemental kingdom and humanity. So the devastating earth changes that were destined to involve millions and millions of people dying and leaving the physical plane have been averted, and that isn't going to happen. So what the company of heaven is asking us to do is to invoke the light. Now, one of the most powerful ways to transmute negativity is known as the violet flame. This violet flame is from the heart of our Father, Mother, God. It is the perfect balance of the sapphire blue radiance of our Father, God's divine will, power, and authority, and the crystal and pink radiance of our Mother, God's divine love, adoration, and reverence for life. Now, our Mother, God, is what we've always referred to as the Holy Spirit in the Trinity, but it is the divine feminine. So this violet flame clears and transmutes the discordant energy that's surfacing back into light before it can manifest as negativity. So when we are shown something like that, and to tell you the truth, what you're picking up is lower astral energies because the company of heaven, they do not give us negative prognosis if there's nothing that we can do about it. For, for instance, if there is a prophecy that is foretelling a negative outcome and that negative outcome actually occurs, that prophecy has failed to accomplish its divine mission. The only time the company of heaven ever gives us information about something negative that could occur is because they are showing us what will occur, just like with the Nostradamus prophecies. They're showing us what will occur at our present course of direction. But they are showing those things to us to let us know that we have the ability to change our course of direction and avert those negative outcomes. And that's really what's happened. The light is greatly increasing on this planet. The cataclysmic earth changes that were prophesized by the, for the late 1990s and the Holocaust nuclear war, none of those things happened. Not because Nostradamus made a mistake, but because enough of humanity were invoking the light, adding love and light to the world to transmute and avert those cataclysmic earth changes. So if you are having dreams about negative earth changes, for one thing, know that you have the ability to do something about it and invoke the light, asking God to transmute whatever thoughts, words, actions, or feelings created those negative patterns in the first place. Now, we've messed up this planet for a very long time, so there are going to be shifts and cleansing and purging and earthquakes and that kind of thing, but it is going to be with a minimal loss of human life compared to what the prophecies had indicated before. So move out of fear, 
fear just amplifies the negativity. Don't focus on the negativity. It's only being shown to you to inspire you to invoke the light and transmute it back into light. So, um, I have a question. Um, back to the earth and how it's a big part of the, the light and um, the ascension. You said about the, the earth having chakras. Yes. Can you explain more about that? Yes, the earth is a living, breathing organism. She is not just this inanimate object that we've come to believe she is. When we, we used to know that before our fall, when we fell into such separation and duality, we started believing from our lower consciousness, when we disconnected from our God self, that the earth was just for us to use and abuse as we willed. And so we've ravaged her and done terrible things to her. Now what is happening is we're beginning to remember that this is a living, breathing organism. The Earth has a physical body that we're very aware of. It also has a mental strata, an emotional strata, and an etheric strata that is the records and memories of everything that can happen. The axis of the Earth is a pillar of light. You know, I know at this time there are a lot of people that are saying, well, this location is the heart chakra or this location is the throat chakra on the planet, just like I mentioned that this island of Hawaii near Diamond Hit was the crown chakra. But it's not actually, the earth is like we are. Our chakras are not on various places on the surface of our body. Our chakras align along our axis. And the chakras for the planet also align along the axis. But then those chakras, we have meridians they go to various places on the planet. And if you've ever had reflexology or had uh, work done on your hands or your feet, you know that all of the acupuncture meridians that go to all of the chakras, the nerve endings, are in our hands and our feet. And you can go to an area in your hand and massage it, and it'll activate the heart chakra or the uh, liver area or the kidneys or wherever else the chakra is feeding on the planet. So, in the body of Mother Earth, there are meridians that run through the Earth, just like our acupuncture meridians, and it's called the crystal grid system, because these meridians are energized with the crystals and the minerals in the body of Mother Earth. So, the Earth absolutely has chakras, she has meridians, and she has acupuncture points on the surface of the Earth. And a lot of times where people are gathered uh, at sacred sites and power points and things like that, these are the acupuncture points on the surface of the earth. I just wanted to say that Tim says thank you and that he's going to do what you advise him. Okay, thank you. Um, Megan, do you have another question? Um... Well, do you think that Gaia is in relation to our bodies as well? Like, I know that we come from, I know that we come from Gaia and that she's our mother. Um, but do you think her energies and her chakras will line up with ours? I think we're all interrelated. Now, the, there are three different life waves evolving on this planet. There's the human kingdom, the sons and daughters of God that, that we are very aware of. There's the angelic kingdom that we're very aware of, but that we don't see as easily. And there's also the elemental kingdom. Now, the elemental kingdom are beings of light that have a divine intelligence that actually comprise the physical substance of the earth, the earth, the air, the water, and the fire. And our physical body is absolutely reflecting the elemental kingdom. Our physical body is associated with the earth element and all the minerals and substance of the earth element. Our mental body is associated with the fire element and the mental body is connected to the divine mind of God and there's a mental strata of the earth. Now mental is associated with the fire element. There's the emotional body that's associated with the water element and there's an emotional strata 
of the earth. That's our largest vehicle and the majority of our energy is reflected through the emotional body. So our body is 80% water and the body of Mother Earth is also 80% water. And then we have the etheric body which extends a little beyond and is a, it is comprised of the air element. And the etheric body of the earth is associated with the air element. So the physical substance of our physical, etheric, mental, and emotional body is identical to the physical substance within the physical, etheric, mental, and emotional body of Mother Earth. So what affects one certainly affects the other. Hmm. So what do you have to say for kids who want to get more involved in this sort of thing? Well, there are all different kinds of ways to get involved. The important thing is knowing that no two people have the same plan. So you have to go within, connect with your heart, and see what your plan is. As far as the information I'm sharing with you, you can go to my website, and I have all different kinds of things on my website. I have years' worth of past newsletters that you can go in in the important information section and go into the archives of the newsletters. I have 13 free webinars that are on the website. I have You can sign up to receive a free monthly email article that I send that's sharing information that's being given to us by the beings of light to help us through these challenging times. And then I've written books and I have CDs and, and DVDs and things like that that are available also if you want to study and go more in depth. I offer free seminars throughout the United States this coming weekend. We're going to be doing a seminar in Santa Clara, California. And you can go to my website and see if that's near you. You're welcome to come. Those are on a Sunday and they're from 10 in the morning till 3.30 in the afternoon. Uh, and we offer several throughout the year, so you can go to my website. And my website is just eraofpeace.org. That's E-R-A, era of O-V, or O-F, I mean, O-F, peace, P-E-A-C-E, eraofpeace.org. And so we have caller one three. They have a question, so... Eight one three, you here? Hello. Is there, is there someone there from area code eight one three that has a question? Yes. But apparently they're not talking. This is the second time that they called and they don't talk. I wonder if they have their phone muted. Do you think they might have their phone muted by mistake? Do they know how to unmute their phone? I'm not sure how that works, but I know that. Um, A13, if you are listening, can you please call us back? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I think that uh, I know that the Earth is going through a lot of changes, and I think that I think that the Earth is uh, very similar to us in, in many ways. Because we're kind of going with this through her, and, and um, we all hold the same vibrations, um, similarly to um, the third dimension and things like that. Um, but what do you say to people who are in situations like um, people who are done with the religion, but yet they are still stuck and partial of um, the religion? Um, what do you, what advice could you give to them if um, they are beyond that, but can't move beyond that right now? Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand the question. You're talking about people and their relationship to their religion? Yeah. Okay, and if they're stuck but, in the religion, did you say? Yes, but they are, um, their consciousness is much beyond that, but they can't, um, but they can't let go of their religion. Like, they still have um, certain ties to it. Okay, we never ever know what anybody else's life plan is. And everybody is in their right and perfect place. And so what is happening now, you know, and this is just because we can't judge and we can't guess and we we look and we think from our perspective it looks like this, but it might be something entirely different. And what happens is often 
is that there are a lot of very powerful light beings that have volunteered to come into this physical plane and to connect with the various world religions because a lot of the world religions have been very distorted by the lower human ego of humanity and they've been used to manipulate and control people and they have a lot of misinformation and what's called disinformation, deliberate misinformation so that people will be uh, fear-based and connected with it at a fear level. Now I'm not saying that's of all religions but I know that that we all know that that is certainly a factor of what's going on so it might be that these souls that you your friends and people that you know that have a much higher consciousness that are really connected and feel drawn to stay in their religion are there because they are raising up and shifting the consciousness of the people that are locked into that religion and this is why, you know, we need to be integrated into mainstream humanity as we awaken and as we move forward. This is why in the 1960s, you know, the hippies were trying to commit to, they were saying love not war and had this wonderful shift of consciousness. And they were trying to create what they called communes where they would all come together and live in the woods and not be hassled by the outer world greed and selfishness and all of those kinds of things. Well, the communes didn't work because spiritually awakened people aren't supposed to cloister themselves away in these protected environments. They're to integrate themselves into mainstream humanity. You know, for instance, in, in Tucson, where I'm from, we have, uh, now it's called Raytheon, it used to be Hughes, but it's a, it's a company that builds missiles and bombs for war. And it's one of the best paying companies and the best benefits in Tucson, a higher source of income. And when I was doing my counseling, I was a marriage and family counselor for 20 years. When I was doing my counseling, people would come to me and they would say, I feel so guilty. I feel so terrible. Here I am working at Hughes and making these missiles and these bombs for war, but I have to support my family. I don't have any other way, any other source of income that will compare to this, that will help me with this. And I said, well, you're in your right and perfect place. I said, imagine what would happen if the only people making these bombs were had a consciousness to be willing to be warmongers. I said, you, on the contrary, you can be working here. You can ask Archangel Michael to put an invincible force field of protection around every bomb you make, every bomb that is being made there, so that it'll never be used for war and it'll never harm any part of life. And you can transmute what's going on. If we work with the IRS, we can shift the consciousness. If we work with the banking systems, we can shift the consciousness out of the greed and selfishness and the dog-eat-dog to rather coming up with a win-win situation so that there is a flow of abundance into everybody's life so that everybody can have what they need. Right now, we have all of the technology we need so that there shouldn't be a hungry person on the planet, there shouldn't be a person without shelter, without health care, without comfort and security and safety. And the only reason there isn't is because of people manipulating and controlling from their fear-based egos to block and resist and to prevent those things from happening. So the light workers, the awakening souls, just like all of you young people who are powerful light beings that have volunteered to come and help, need to be integrated into all of these places. Religions, uh, schools, colleges, uh, industry, corporations. We need to shift the consciousness at a grassroots level. So that's why people are where they are. So, um, heaven here on the chat room is asking, what do you do to stay centered? Well, that's what I was talking about earlier. That was the same question that someone mentioned earlier. Invoking Archangel Michael to put a force field of light around you and to fill that circle of white light with peace, with love, with harmony and balance. Then focus on light things, focus on positive things. If something's negative going on in your life, look at it, observe it as an objective observer, but say, what do I want instead of that? And then start focusing on what you want to create. 
working with the holy breath, breathing in deeply, saying I, as you reach into the higher realms, as you exhale, say am, and bring that light from the heart of God into the physical plane, flooding the earth, and do things in your life that make you feel joyous, that you know are adding to the light of the world. So we have again area code 138. Let's see if now they want 838. Are you here? Yes. Where is? I don't know what was happening to my phone. But um, I, I guess my uh, I have a question and an observation. Uh, being a much older person, um, I have uh, an awareness from the news and from talking to friends and acquaintances and, you know, everyone. I'm just shocked at the number of adults who are on drugs. I'm talking about prescription drugs. Uh, a lot of uh, the pain medications, a lot of tranquilizers, uh, et cetera. And then, uh, of course, going to the younger people, too, the amount of drug use uh, that is going on, on out there. What would you suggest that each one of us do to uh, change that or uh, reach them in some way? Words won't do it, of course. And so what would you suggest we all do to help these people who are so addicted to drugs, many of them not even realizing they're addicted? Right. And it's not surprising that they are. I mean, you, how many television commercials do you see promoting drugs, talking people into going to drugs? The pharmaceutical industry has totally infiltrated uh, the medical association. The doctors are promoting drugs. The doctors, everybody, that's the fastest, quickest answer because of the money involved. And so what we have to do, it's important to know that Fundamental change never begins at the top. It begins at a grassroots level. And what one of my favorite quotes from Buckminster Fuller is that in order to change something, you don't try to change the existing model. You create a new model and make the old one obsolete. So what we need to do is start empowering people. And I think some of that's happening now as people are trying to deal with the rampant obesity and diabetes and things like that to shift the consciousness toward health and well-being, to accept responsibility for taking care of yourself, to know that there's not going to be a quick pill or something that's just going to solve all of the problems for you, to try to find healthier, more holistic ways of dealing with that kind of thing. Now, in addition to that, because all life is one, all life is interconnected, we have the ability to invoke the God Self, the I Am Presence of every man, woman, and child on the planet. Now their I Am Presence will only work in alignment with their divine plan and their highest good. But if those of us in the physical plane who are one with those souls invoke their I Am Presence, it gives that aspect of their divinity permission to intervene in their lives. So we can ask the I Am Presence of every person to invoke Archangel Michael to put a force field of protection around each one, to raise them up in consciousness, to help them perceive that there are alternative, healthier ways to deal with the physical challenges that they're going through, and to ask their God Self to magnetize into their lives the people, the holistic healers, the uh, natural doctors, and things like that, that have alternatives to just drugs, 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 which is what is happening. This is an environmental catastrophe that is happening in the drug industry at this particular time because they are prescribing so many drugs and no matter how much they have individually tested these drugs, nobody has tested what these drugs will do in combination with each other in somebody's body. And though that's individual anyway. It, what affects one person is another so we are in uncharted waters in the this uh, toxic cocktail that we are giving people and people are giving themselves so what we have to do is shift the consciousness we're not going to get the pharmaceutical industry to say okay i'm going to stop prescribing so many drugs we're not going to get the medical professions to start doing that we have to shift the consciousness so that people say wait a minute i'm not willing to do this to myself anymore so we start at the bottom invoking their 
protection, asking their God self to take command of their thoughts, words, actions, and feelings, and asking their God self to magnetize the right and perfect people into their lives that will help them perceive a better way. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Megan, do you have another question? Yes. Um, what can you suggest to our listeners um, so they can become more intuitive, um, become more in touch with uh, upcoming events in our world? Okay. Um, actually, we were never supposed to lose the ability to stay in touch with the heavenly realms. And it isn't so important that we don't need to be psychic and foretell everything that's going to be happening. What we need to do is be able to reconnect with our God Self, our I Am Presence, and in turn, through our God Self, connect with the company of heaven. These are our sisters and brothers, as I mentioned earlier, that have evolved to a higher level of consciousness. And these are beings who are actually guiding and directing us according to our highest good. And there are teachers and our guidance that is coming from the realms that will help us know how to handle the challenges of our lives, giving us tools, opportunities to help. So the most effective way of doing that is by connecting with your God Self, invoking that assistance, meditating, putting yourself in a force field of protection, asking your God Self to connect your I Am Presence to connect with the beings of light, asking those beings of light, and you can call them by name. They're certainly all of the wonderful beings that we know that are associated with the world religions, Jesus, Mother Mary, Moses, Mohammed, all of the uh, Buddha, all of the beings that are associated with the world religions. But there's also Archangel Michael, all of the angels. There are and if you don't know names of beings, you can invoke them according to whatever divine quality. You can invoke, for instance, angels of healing, angels of divine. And they first of all say that they're all of a sudden out of their body and that we don't even lose consciousness when we die. And then they pass through this dark tunnel toward the light and they go into the octave of light. And once they're in that octave of light, they begin to connect with the beings of light, with their loved ones that have crossed over, and they begin to awaken and remember all of this divine knowledge. Well, this tunnel that they pass through is the sea of negativity around the planet. And what that is, it's the accumulation of humanity's negative thought forms, negative behavior patterns, all of the discord and the human miscreations that we have created inadvertently because we didn't know any better and because we forgot that we were God beings. So when you're doing your meditation, see a tremendous shaft of light enveloping you, passing through this realm of darkness into the light so that this is just like this mighty pillar that you go up and down, just like in an elevator, passing through the psychic astral realm of confusion into the realms of illumined truth and then ask for guidance from that dimension and ask that nothing from that lower realm of chaos come through you when you're reaching up for inner guidance and then don't worry if you don't get anything just that moment just be open and receptive and as you go about your day ideas will pop into your mind you'll start seeing the same old problem in a new way with fresh eyes with new viable solutions that you hadn't thought of before Sometimes it'll be in your sleep that you'll seek out the answers for that. And when you wake up in the morning, you'll have the answer to your question or what you're asking. The, when we ask for that assistance, the floodgates of heaven open. And the only reason we haven't really known that or heard it as clearly is because we have forgotten that we have the ability to do that. So we talk ourselves out of that guidance and that information. We think, oh, that's just my imagination or, oh, that's just uh, my wishful thinking or something. So trust, know, open, protect yourself, and it's going to happen. The beings of light are anxiously awaiting the opportunity to work with you, all of us, on a conscious level. Um, Eric in the chat room is asking, can meditating in a room affect other people who visit that room later on? Absolutely. It shifts the consciousness of the room. That's why it's wonderful 
to create a sacred space for yourself and to do your meditations in the same place, the energy builds and builds and builds in momentum. That's why, you know, when they talk about these magnificent cathedrals or churches or sacred sites or PowerPoints on the planet, is that people have gone there time and time again and they've invoked the light and the light is, stays there. It doesn't go away. It stays there. So the more you meditate, the more you create an environment in the room and your loved ones will come in and they'll experience that. They'll feel greater peace. They'll feel greater harmony. It absolutely shifts the room. And you can ask when you're doing your meditation, if you're doing it in your home, ask if it expand to envelop your entire home. So that not just in your sacred space where you meditate, but in the kitchen and then when you're in the laundry room and everywhere, you've created a more peaceful, loving environment for yourself. Okay, that, that's, that's, that's great. I, I completely agree with you. And there is another question. It says, um, is there, like basically, is there different ways people can meditate? If so, can you explain how? There are all different kinds of ways that people can meditate. Sometimes people meditate by walking in nature and just allowing that beauty of nature to caress them and that's when they quiet their mind enough to feel like they're in a beautiful meditative state. Sometimes it's exercising. Sometimes it's swimming. You know, there's a lot of different ways. Sometimes it's reading inspirational books or listening to CDs or doing visualizations or something like that that just calm you enough to let and then pretty soon you're letting go what you're reading on the page and other information is coming through you or you're letting go what you're hearing in the meditation on the CD and other information is coming through you so there's don't limit yourself I mean I know that a lot of the older teachings said that you know you need to meditate eight hours a day or whatever and focus on your breath for the whole time. And there was a time when things were so dense and so dark that that probably is exactly what we needed to do. But now it's becoming more and more rarefied. Our consciousness is raised up. We are lifting up higher. So it's not taking as long. The beings of light have come through the veil to meet us halfway. So everything is being greatly accelerated. So quiet yourself and see what works for you. Experiment in a lot of different ways and see what works for you. Thank you so much um, for that. We also have another question from the chat room. It says, can people meditate differently, like laying down, sitting? Absolutely. Uh, Your type of meditation is all that you need to worry about. You don't need to follow anybody else's method. But if you lay down to meditate and you fall asleep every time, then try sitting up, you know, because falling asleep is not meditating. Not that it's not okay to meditate and fall asleep when you're going to sleep at night and to let a meditation take you into that restful sleep. But when you're trying to communicate and connect with the higher realms on a conscious level, it's better to stay awake. So sometimes just listening to really beautiful music or as I said, walking in nature or swimming or doing something that keeps you focused and yet not distracted from your meditation uh, might be a better thing to do. But yes, there's no right and perfect way for every person to meditate. What? projects are you working on right now? The project that I'm working on right now is the World Congress on Illumination this year. As far as, I mean, there's going to be a lot of things that go on this year. The World Congress this year is going to take place in August on the island of Kauai. And what's going to take place at that event is that there are a lot of shifts that are taking place. What took place in 2011 is that because of the collective consciousness of humanity, awakened light workers actually co-created a new planetary cause of divine loves, which means that now new frequencies of love are coming into the planet that are going to greatly help shift the consciousness. And that is going to an acceleration of that, creating a new planetary cause of love in the physical, a new order of the day, 
for the planet, greatly expanding the patterns of love in the physical plane is going to occur in August. So that's one of the projects that I'm working on. And in addition to that, I'm doing several free seminars between now and August. And as I mentioned, one of them is going to be in Santa Clara, California this weekend. I am uh, writing a new book and I am also working on some new CDs that have information and guided visualizations and things on them as well. In addition to that, I do my own online radio show that is every Tuesday morning on BBS Radio and you can just go to bbsradio.com. It's 10 o'clock Pacific Time or 1 o'clock Eastern Time and it's like this show. It's informative, sharing information and it's uh, there's no commercials and I just share information. I don't have guests on it but I share information that have been given to us by the Company of Heaven. So that is another one of my projects and things that I'm working on. So, and whatever else I'm guided to do by the company of heaven between now and the end of the year, because this is a really important and very powerful year mm-hmm. for all of us. So Patricia, how do you feel about what you do? Like, do you, do you enjoy it? Do you know that you make an impact on people? Um, do you, do you know that you, what you're doing is um, right? Well, the response that I'm getting from people indicates that it's beneficial to them. The only thing I care about what I'm doing is to empower people to go within and connect with their own divinity and the company of heaven so that they can get the information directly for themselves. So my whole momentum has been to empower people to be who they are, to fulfill the divine plan of why they've come because I don't consider myself a channel or I don't consider myself a psychic. I consider myself an ordinary human being who has asked, gone within and asked enough, why is there so much pain and suffering in the world that I have now been receiving for 35 years, wonderful information from the company of heaven to share it with humanity to help them awaken. But no matter how much you care about somebody or trust them or like what they're saying or how clear you think they are as uh, a teacher, that information is still being filtered through that person's consciousness. So it's going to be different than when you're receiving that information yourself. So the most important thing, and I know that this information that's been given to us and that I've been sharing absolutely does that, is the most important thing is to empower people to receive their information directly from the source so they don't have to depend on anyone outside of themselves so that they can be that empowered beloved child of god that they are and forget about this fragmented fear-based lower human ego that delves in low self-esteem and unworthiness and has been programmed to think they're a worthless sinner and a worm in the dust all of that kind of garbage there's nothing that is further from the truth. Every single person on this planet, regardless of how far they are from remembering it or regardless of how their behavior patterns don't reflect that, they are still a beloved child of God that just needs to awaken and remember who they are. And then their behavior patterns and everything they think and believe will be shifted dramatically toward the light, toward oneness, toward reverence for all life. Beautiful. I totally agree with your message and everything that you have to say. Um, but the show is about over. Um, thank you for Patricia being on. And um, I wanted to tell you that we did post your website in the chat. So we hope that people can go and over there and um, look at that. And also, we, this this um, radio show will also be on YouTube. So for those who want to uh, want to watch it later or listen to it in the archives, can. We really thankful that we had you on today, Patricia. Thank you for participating with us. Well, thank you, Megan and Issa. It's been my pleasure. You're welcome. And the next um, show is going to be February the 19th, and it's going to be Tony from Sacred Spaces. So stay tuned for that show, and everybody have a great day.